Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to my first video on Apache Flink. In this video, I'll be talking about the basics of Apache Flink. I'll be answering to the questions that what is Apache Flink and what's its basics, right? Why there's a lot of hype about the Apache Flink. So, okay, so you can see that in the front of you, I've already opened their official documentation page. You can see that uh, Apache Flink has been written as stateful computation over data stream. So I'll be first be discussing what the Apache Flink actually is. Then I'll be talking about its basic basics of it, right? So please uh, stay tuned. The first thing uh, which I want to discuss here is that Apache Flink is a true streaming framework, right? We can say that it is an alternative to the Apache Hadoop MapReduce and it is considered to be 100 times faster than MapReduce. Okay, so like although this is the form informal definition, the formal definition say that it's a framework, right? Uh, for the stateful computations over the unbounded and bounded data streams. So like, let, let me first tell you what's the meaning of this stateful here because it has been written in the official website as a tagline. So the, let me first discuss about the topic or the term stateful. Uh, the thing is that streaming computation, like as I've already told you that Apache Flink has been designed for the streaming, uh, processing the streams. So streaming computation can either be stateless or stateful, right? A stateless program uh, looks at each individual event and creates some output based upon that event. Let me take one example to help you understand the meaning of stateful. For example, a streaming program might receive a, a temperature readings from a sensor and can raise an alert if the temperature goes beyond 90 degrees. So a, a stateful program create a output based upon the multiple events taken together. So in this case, actually, uh, this is a, like one of the example which we can quote in this case that in the case of stateful program in the scenario that when we uh, when we are receiving some multiple temperature readings from multiple sensors so like uh, we need to raise an alert if the temperature goes beyond some threshold value so it's to, so the stateful program creates the output based upon the multiple events taken together so here the top is this this that's why i'm stressing on this point the multiple events taken together but in the case of stateless it look at the each individual event this is this is how it is different from the stateless and stateful uh, a computation so Apache Flink make use of stateful computation over the data stream okay so like you can see in the front of you this is the, just a like scenario they have shown that how the Apache Flink works actually in this case you can see there are a lot of inputs are there this is the like processing area and this is how we can send or how we can store as output so I'll be discussing about all these points in a detail okay so these are some of the like key points or some of the the uh, pros of the Apache Flink that it's making use of. We can make use of Apache Flink in various stream use cases. It guarantees correctness. It has layered API. So I'll be talking about these points in more detail. So let me start with the today's topic that what actually is Apache Flink. So you can see that I have titled as it as a introduction to the Apache Flink. As I've already told you, it's a framework, right? It's a framework which came as an alternative to the Apache Hadoop and it is considered to be uh, much faster than Apache Hadoop. So let me discuss its point so I have divided my uh, like today's video into three parts first is architecture second is applications and third is operations this is official logo of Apache Flink so I'll be first talking about the architecture so let's start with the architecture the first point you can see this like I have just abbreviated the things in the in the form of some bullet points so I'll be discussing these bullets point bullet points in more detail the first thing which I have written here is that important aspects of Flink architecture in the Flink architecture the first point is like uh, process unbounded and bounded data so like uh, I hope uh, like you must be familiar familiar with this word meaning of unbounded is that when we know the start but we don't know the end right this is called unbounded and then the reverse of it is called bounded where when we know the start and end so okay so like the flink actually is capable enough to process both unbounded and bounded data the example of the bounded data is like any, any data which has happened in the past anything which has happened in the past because in the past whatever things happened in the past we know its beginning and we know its ending right so the example of unbounded can be that anything happening uh, in the present or anything happening in the future because we know, don't know what's the end of like uh, what's the end of it right let's suppose if i'm i'm keep if i'm analyzing the stock market now i'm not, i don't know what what will be happen in the future right although we can predict something but we don't know the actual stuff right so this is the example of unbounded the bounded meaning is anything happened in the past for, for in that case we know its beginning we know its ending right so apache flink actually help us in processing both unbounded and bounded data next point is deploy applications anywhere 
okay so apache flink is a distributed system and it can easily integrate with the common cluster resource managers i hope you must uh, must be aware of this term uh, cluster resource manager like we have learned this in the apache hadoop in the apache hadoop we were having apache hadoop yarn right uh, yet another resource negotiator like along with that the flink can be easily integrated with the apache mesos and kubernetes for this uh, for better understanding i've already opened their official website if you know if you want to know like more of the apache mesos or the kubernetes so you can visit these websites okay so like apache flink can be easily integrated with the apache hadoop uh, yarn apache mesos and kubernetes but it can also be set up as an standalone cluster as well i'll be sharing my next video on it only that how we can install as a standalone uh, and in a standalone environment in the local machine right so like so this is the meaning of this deployment that we can deploy applications anywhere because flink can easily be integrated with the uh, the different uh, cluster source managers such as yarn mesos or kubernetes okay third thing is run applications at any scale i hope you must be familiar with this term scalability the meaning of scalability is that how easily we can increase or decrease our resources based upon the request right so the flink has been designed to run stateful streaming applications at any scale whatever the scale of data or whatever the scale of request uh, we are getting so we can we can like uh, uh, we can design the streaming applications like accordingly right so like we can easily scale up or scale down the things based upon the request okay the last point is leverage in memory performance okay so like uh, in the case of apache flink we always uh, like talk about the with respect to the state because i've already mentioned stateful processing so the the apache flink always uh, like uh, maintain the task task state in the memory in memory like in the case of apache spark also apache spark also make use of in memory computation so like uh, the the task perform all the computations by assessing the local or in memory which result in the low processing latency so this can result in the lesser delay right so like uh, in this case we can we can easily compare with the apache spark we always say that apache spark give result much faster than hadoop right so it is all it is uh, the apache flink is much faster than spark also like here in both the in the, the common point between spark and flink is that both make use of in memory computation right so which result in the lower processing latency latency means delay i hope like it is clear now what's the meaning of this architecture like what are different points like with respect to the flink architecture right so let me now go to the next point applications okay so like here i have mentioned what are the different building blocks for streaming applications right so like as i've already said that um, like uh, flink is quite easy to use and uh, like uh, it but uh, is is easy to use framework but for this they have some blending blocks so building blocks has been listed here streams state time right so like i've already have mentioned like uh, that the streams like we can uh, the uh, apache flink is capable enough to like um, uh, to process bounded and unbounded data or unbounded stream so the meaning of stream is like anything like continuous flow of data which, which we call it as stream so the stream like uh, it's a fundamental aspect of uh, like uh, a stream processing right is a basic unit that we use in apache flink so stream can be bounded or unbounded which i've already specified in my Uh, in the like first point well, when i started this video and stream can be real time also it can be recorded stream also right you know that the there are two ways to process the data processing it in real time as it generated right or it can be the flink uh, applications can also process the recorded stream as well the which uh, whatever things happened in the past right next point is state as i've already said that uh, like uh, we always talk about the state as far as flink is concerned right so the any applications which run some business logic right need to remember some intermediate results or anything let's suppose if we take example of any iterative algorithm it has to like uh, like a st uh, store the intermediate results so that it can uh, go it can uh, it can uh, the because the previous result can serve as an input to the next like iteration so we need to save the state of intermediate results right so th that's the reason we have talking about here state right the state is important because we need to save the intermediate results so that we can assess them at a later point in a time right so this is the like this is how it is important for us because here we always talk about the state the best example again we can quote here is that in the operating system we have process control block which is a data structure like per pcb actually help us in saving the state of a process okay so while while performing the context switching right we don't have to start from a scratch 
right? We can we can resume where we like left off, right? The third point is time. So time is another important ingredient of the uh, streaming applications, right? So many stream co computations are based upon time, such as Windows aggregation. So uh, in my upcoming videos, I'll be talking about Windows also. So you must be wondering what's a window here? Like I can take you, I can give you a little example here. Like in the net networking, like we always talk about sliding window protocols, in which we have uh, some virtual window, right? Window meaning is that. Like, uh, uh, like it is a time notion. Like we always talk about with respect to time here. Like, like, uh, like we can we can process data based upon the window size, right? So it's that window. So we'll be uh, no worries. We'll be talking about this window like concept in the upcoming videos. Uh, like as I was said, that it's an important ingredient of a streaming applications. Many computations such as windows aggregation, joins, right, will be based upon the time only so time is also very very important for us so the building blocks of streaming applications are these three streams straight time right okay the next point is layered apis right again it is a very uh, it's quite important for us like uh, what's the meaning of layered apis here we have mentioned three apis sql tab table api data stream api process function and we have mentioned in the right side that like uh, minus plus meaning is that conciseness will be increased if we go up then the expressiveness will be increased if we go down. This is the meaning of plus and minus sign. The first thing is table API. So a table API is, is in a relational API with the SQL-like expression language, right? You, uh, I hope you, uh, if you're from a database background, you know what's the meaning of SQL and table. So it's an API available, which is a relational API with the SQL-like expression language, right? Next point is data stream API. So again, we have a separate API for the processing data stream of uh, data streams. So like um, Apache Fling offers a data stream API for building the robust and stateful streaming applications, right? It also help us in uh, providing the uh, fine grained control over the state and time, which allows for the like implementation of the advanced even driven systems. So we'll be talking about in my upcoming videos what are different operations that we can uh, we can perform on the data stream using data frame uh, data stream API, right? And third one is process function. So it is an it's a, a quite a new term for us process function. So let me discuss what's a process function actually is. It's an uh, it's an low level uh, stream processing operation which giving access to the basic building blocks of all streaming applications which are events, states, timer. Right? So it is a, a very low level stream processing operations which are giving access to the basic building blocks of a streaming applications. So this is how we can like uh, talk about the layered APIs. You can see here as like we have written that high level analytics API. This is for the stream and batch data processing and this is used for the stateful event driven applications. Right? So uh, all the three different APIs have a different uh, role to play. So we'll be talking about these APIs in separate videos. And you can see that uh, like if we if we uh, goes um, like this this meaning is that conciseness decrease if we go down and um, in this case again like the expressiveness decrease if we go up this is how we can interpret this diagram okay and last point is operations right as uh, like uh, like uh, in the apache flink the basic thing is that it it puts a strong focus on the operational aspects of a stream processing right uh, because uh, like uh, Apache Flink has his its own failure recovery me mechanism, right? And presents its features to manage and supervise running applications. So like you can see that we have written here that uh, run your applications nonstop 24 by seven, right? Uh, like um, actually it ensures that your applications will run nonstop 24 by seven because uh, as I've already told you that Flink make use of multiple things. Like we have a failure, uh, we have a failure recovery mechanism we make use of some checkpoints so that if if any failure occurs we don't have we don't have to start from a scratch we can start where we left off right and we have our like consistent checkpoints and we are having the like um, a, uh, application evolution so like multiple things are available that which actually help us in uh, running my applications 24 by 7 in addition to it that we can also update migrate suspend and resume our applications as per our demand like whenever I want to like uh, like uh, hold on my applications, I have, I have a full authority in suspending my application, and can I can resume afterwards when the when when I, I when I want, right? In addition to it, that we can also control and monitor the, uh, my applications because Flink actually give us the uh, web UI, like in the Spark or Hadoop. Also, it, it they are having their own user interfaces. Similarly, uh, Apache Flink gives us the web UI. In addition to it, uh, also the Flink implements a popular 
SL, uh, SLF4J uh, login interface, right? Uh, in addition to it, uh, like it also give us the, uh, like uh, it also features a sophisticated matrices system to collect and report uh, system and user defined uh, like uh, matrices. And in addition to it, we have a REST API. So like, like we are having multiple ways in which we can monitor and control my applications, right? So in all, in summary, that Flink is like quite a powerful tool for us, uh, which is a true streaming framework as a tagline and it, it make use of a stateful uh, uh, processing, right? Okay, so I hope like uh, the introduction to the Apache Flink must be understood, right? In case like if you have like uh, issue with any point which I have like sp uh, spoken uh, like uh, while deriving this video, you can ask, right? And you can, you can ask uh, by uh, putting your valuable comment and I'll be looking forward to your feedback as well. Thanks for watching, see you next video.